Okay, section 6.3, projection at any angle, chapter 6, applied and uh, the applied statistics and mechanics year 2 book. Not much more to it than um, the previous section. Um, just a few words and terms we need to know really, but um, identical working to what you were doing in the previous section. So uh, something I mentioned in the first section was um, what happens at the greatest height. Now you can see the greatest height on this diagram. Um, in this case, it happens to be sort of at that point there, depending on the point of projection. So for example, if I had uh, something where um, something was projected up and it came further down like that, then, you know, this would be my like greatest height. Um, but what's important at the greatest height is that the vertical velocity is zero. So it, it starts at a initial velocity, it slows down as it gets to its peak. This is the vertical velocity, gets comes to zero and then drops again. Now remember the horizontal velocity is always the same. So at the greatest height, the horizontal velocity is the same as it was at the start, whereas the vertical velocity is zero. So it's worth noting that that at the greatest height, I'll just write it down here, uh, vertical velocity is zero. Yeah, so if you want to find a greatest height, you need to be working in the vertical and, and make uh, V equal to zero in the vertical. The time of flight, well, that's just how long the particle is in the air. So time of flight, if you see that phrase, it means how long is the particle airborne? Okay. So how long is it in the air? And the range, well, the range is the horizontal distance from the point of projection to the point of landing. We call that the range. So the range of a particle is basically the horizontal distance from the point of projection to the time that it, it hits the ground again. So range equals uh, horizontal distance from point of projection projection to landing point yeah landing point when it hits the ground so we just need to know those those terms but everything else is the same okay so when you do these start with a diagram so I can see that this thing is projected from the origin uh, I've got its speed and the angle of elevation and um, it looks like I think something like this. So this is the origin here. It goes up and it comes back down here. And we are given this. So this is 28. And this angle here is 30 degrees. Okay. So um, first of all, find the greatest height. Let's put in. Um, our acceleration as well, gravity 9.8 there, I won't worry with the units, you know what the units are. So at the greatest height, at greatest height, if you were doing a question exam it might be worth writing this down, at the greatest height the uh, vertical velocity Vy equals zero. So let's use SUVAP 
do we have enough information with Suva? I think we do. So we want to find S. Now I'm taking upwards as positive here. So S is going to be what I'm trying to find. U. Now we 28 sine 30. Now remember, vertical is always U sine theta, uh, alpha and horizontal is always U cos alpha. Uh, v, right, and what do we know? That's zero at the greatest height. Now, since I'm taping upwards as positive, A needs to be negative 9.8, and um, I don't care about the time. So S, U, A, and T. Um, so, uh, sorry, S, U, S, U, V, uh, A, S, U, V, A. So that will be uh, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So 0 squared equals 28 sine 30 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times by S. And that's what we're trying to find. So if I do um, 28 sine 30, so I'm going to take this across squared, so it becomes a negative, and then divide that by 2 times negative 9.8, so the negatives cancel out. That will give me S, so I've just rearranged it to find S. So Let's do that. 28 sine 30, 14, square that. I get 196. Uh, it's useful to write down bits of your working rather than just the final answer, just in case something goes wrong. Um, well, it's negative 9.196. Um, and then negative uh, 19.6. Oh, and then what happens? We just get. 10 as our answer so 10 meters is the maximum height so we made the vertical velocity equal to zero at the maximum height okay part b the time of flight okay that's how long it's in the air now in this particular case, it's going to be in the air as long as the vertical velocity is non-zero. So, oh, so the vertical displacement is non-zero. So here, the vertical displacement is zero. Then the vertical displacement increases up to 10. Then as it comes down, the vertical displacement de decreases and then it's back to zero again. So for the time of flight, it reaches the ground again when S equals zero. OK, so we'll just put down S equals zero when um, the particle reaches the ground again. OK, so we're going to be using the um, vertical. Uh, information on this one sometimes you might use the horizontal because I know that s is going to be zero so um, again I'm going to take upwards as positive so this time s is zero I'm not finding the greatest height I just want to find out um, time of flight so t I want to find a is going to be negative 9.8 uh, u um, that's going to be 28 at sine 30, just like before. And I am not interested in V. So S, U, A and T. And that means we're going to be using S equals UT plus half AT squared 
So 0 equals uh, 28 sine 30 times by t. So it looks like we might have a quadratic or something that we might need to factorize to find the solutions for. Plus half times negative 9.8 t squared. OK, let's simplify this and see what we get. So um, 28 sine 30 is going to be 14. So I end up with 14 t uh, minus 4.9 t squared is 0. Now we can factorize that. So we've got t 14 minus 4.9 t. OK, so that means either t is 0. Well, we know that and that makes sense, actually, because actually we know that at t equals 0, s is 0. So that makes sense. So we want to find the other time when uh, s is 0. That means solving uh, 14 minus 4.9 t equals 0. So that means uh, 14 equals 4.9 t, which means that t is going to be 14 over 4.9. And if I do that, 14 divided by 4.9, uh, 20 over 7, I get 2.857142, um, three significant figures, 2.8 six three significant figures 2.86 seconds that's the time it's in the air and that seems like a sensible answer you throw a ball or something and it's in the air for three seconds that seems sensible okay so let's just highlight that so we're now on to the last bit of question the distance o to a now I didn't put down the letters on the diagram so I suppose I should do um, O is here and it strikes the plane at A so this is A so we're trying to find uh, in part C let's just uh, create a bit of space here get this out of the way uh, we're trying to find what um, the distance is from O to A. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. The way that I'm going to do it is to look at the horizontal and what's going on in the horizontal direction because I know with the horizontal I can use your speed, distance, and time. Um, I know the initial speed. Um, I know the time it takes to get to point A. I just work that out down here. And I just need to work out the distance. So we can use speed, speed, distance, time. OK. Speed, distance, time. And I'm trying to find the distance here. So I'm going to take the speed horizontally so remember we're just dealing with the horizontal uh, the initial speed horizontally is going to be 28 cos 30 so 28 cos 30 and uh, speed times the time now that was at 2.86 um, I would use the answer button to get an exact answer you don't want to be really using a rounded answer. So I'm just going to do 28 cos 30, close the bracket, times by answer, and I get exactly 40 root 3. So it, it turns nicely into something, you know, I could write exactly as 40 root 3, and that's 69.2820323, three significant figures, that would be 69.3. So I get here 69.3 uh, and it's a distance is in meters. So I'll just highlight that answer for C there. Okay, let's have a look at this one. 
we're um, given the angle was the tan of the angle. All right, it's not a problem. Uh, diagram again, so we know what's going on. Uh, project to the point O. Uh, the point O is 42.5 meters above a horizontal plane, and it strikes the plane at A. So this is slightly different. What we have is something like this. It's projected up and then comes down and hits the ground over here. And we are told that this distance here is 42.5 meters from there to there. Uh, we know the um, initial velocity. Uh, oh, no, we don't, do we? Uh, projectors point O. Oh, yes, we do. It's called V. I thought they would have called it U. That's why. So this is V. And this angle here is theta. And we're told that tan theta is four thirds. Now we know how to deal with that. So we've got all the information there. And it says it strikes point A five seconds after it's projected. So basically the question says it says it takes five seconds to get to that point there. Right, so let's uh, work out, use the tan alpha equals four thirds to work out what the others are. So if you've got tan, or tan alpha, tan theta equals four thirds, right angle triangle, theta is there, opposite over adjacent, that means that's five. So we have sine theta is going to be four fifths, and cos theta is going to be three fifths. So we've got those there to one side, we'll probably need them in a minute. So part A, show that V is 20. So let's have a, a think about what I've got horizontally and vertically. It might even be a combination of both, right? Horizontally, what have I got? Um, have I got the initial velocity? Well, not really, I don't know V. Have I got the horizontal distance? No, I've got the time. So there, there are too many unknowns. I only have one known. I only have the time. I don't have that distance and I don't have that velocity. So we're not going to start with a horizontal. How about vertical? Well, vertical, um, how many unknowns are we going to have? Well, we just need three knowns, basically. Do we have three knowns? And I think we do. We know the displacement. We know the time. And one other thing we know that I haven't put on here is I know the acceleration. Once I know three things, I can use that to work out the fourth. So that's going to be 9.8. So we're going to start with the vertical and I'm going to take upwards as positive. You could take downwards as positive. If you want to, SUVAT. Right, so we know that when there is a displacement of 42.5, that's going to be negative 42.5, because that's downwards below the point of projection. We know that uh, U is going to be V um, sine theta. Now sine theta is four fifths. So it's basically four fifths V. Um, v we don't know, we don't really care about. A, that's going to be negative 9.8. So be careful with your positives and negatives. So you may decide that you're going to take, I don't know, maybe the other direction. Downwards is positive. So negative 9.8. And the time, well, we know it takes five seconds to do that displacement. So we have S, U, A, and T. So we want a formula that has S, U, A, and T. S equals U, T plus half A, T squared. You'll find this comes up a lot. You seem to be using S equals U, T plus half A, T squared a lot in these questions. 
right so negative 42.5 equals uh, 4 fifths V times by 5 plus half times negative 9.8 T squared so 5 squared so let's see what we get negative 42.5 so 4 fifths times 5 is just 4 so we end up with 4V uh, and then we're going to end up with half times negative 9.8 which is negative 4.9 times by 25 5 squared that gives you minus 122.5 so minus 122.5 so 4V is going to equal negative uh, 42.5 Let's tie that in negative 42.5 and then we're going to be adding 122.5 so you get 80 that's nice it's always nice when you get these whole number answers which means that v is 20 right meters per second that isn't uh, oh that is done show that v is 20 we've done that right part b Find the distance from O to A. So let's mark down where O is on our diagram. So the point O is here. The point A is here. So it's not just a horizontal distance. It's actually like the direct distance from there to there this is what we want to find now if i'm going to want if i want to find that i'm going to need pythagoras because what i've got uh here and this bit i'll draw it down here is a right angle triangle this is what i want to find that distance there i know this is 42.5 so if i want to use pythagoras I will need to find this length here now that is the horizontal displacement now we know the um, we can work out the horizontal speed we know the horizontal time so we can use that to work out the horizontal distance so in part B uh, the first thing we're going to do is to work out what the horizontal uh, velocity is so u uh, x horizontal uh, initial velocity uh, and it is the whole velocity because it's constant equals um, remember that's going to be u in this case is going to be v cos theta uh, u v is 20 and then cos theta we worked out is three fifths so basically it's it's three fifths of 20 which i think is 12 yeah it's 12 so that's the in that's the initial velocity or speed horizontally um so the actual distance horizontally is just going to be the speed times the time so the displacement horizontally is just going to be the speed times the time how far does it go across in five seconds so that's going to be 60 meters right so that remember is this here so we found that is 60 that's meters as well so now we can just do pythagoras so um just write down the distance oa distance oa equals the square root of 42.5 squared plus 60 squared Let's just work that out. 
square root 42.5 squared plus 60 squared and we end up with 5 root 865 over 2 which is uh, 73.5272085 three significant figures 73.5 meters okay so here we have uh, a particle which is projected from the ground and comes back to the ground so it goes like that this is the point o here um, and we want um, the initial velocity 35 and 30 degrees our acceleration goes down now this question is slightly different because it says find the length of, the, of time for which the particle is 15 meters or above O so this bit here this is different right let's draw what that looks going to look like so let's say that this is 15 meters um, above uh, the point of projection and we want to know let's highlight it we want to know how long is it up here that's what we're we're really interested in so basically we want to find out the times what well, a way that we're going to do this we're going to find out the times when um, the vertical displacement is zero let me just write that down so we're going to find the times I'm not sure what's going on with this pen when the vertical displacement and what do we call the vertical displacement um, s y equals 15 and then find the difference between those two times all right so i tidied up the text a bit um, so this question is all to do with the vertical yeah the displacement is a vertical displacement 15 um, the only thing that we know horizontally is the horizontal speed we don't know anything else uh, the um, initial velocity is going to be 35 sine uh, 30 uh, the final velocity well we're not interested in that uh, the acceleration now I'm taking upwards as positive so a is going to be negative 9.8 and we want to find the times when the displacement is 15 so s u a and t so same formula again s equals u t plus half a t squared s equals u t plus half a t squared so 15 equals 35 sine 30 times by t plus half times negative 9.8 t squared so it looks like we're going to have some sort of quadratic in a moment so 35 times sine 30 is um, 17.5 so 15 equals 17.5 t minus 4.9 t squared so let's make this look like a quadratic 4.9 t squared uh, minus 17.5 t plus 15 so i've just moved everything over to the left so we've got that quadratic uh, i'm not even going to try and factorize that so um, i can use my calculator uh, to to solve this even though I'm solving it on a calculator, I'm going to um, write down 
the quadratic equation with a as 4.9, b as negative 17.5, and c as 15. So at minus negative 17.5, plus or minus b squared so even though I may do it on the calculator minus I'm writing it all down for a c just in case things go around wrong all over 2a so 2 times 4.9 so let's do that now even though I write that down I'm just going to go to menu solve um, and polynomial with degree 2 and I'm just going to put the coefficients in so 4.9 in front of x squared negative um, 17.5 is going to go in front of x and 15 for c press equals I get my solutions so 15 over 7 is 1 so I get a value of um, t as what is it exactly I'm going to do 15 over 7 because it, you get a funny decimal otherwise so 15 over 7 for 1 and press equals again to get x2 that's going to be a fun, funny decimal that's 10 over 7 now the advantage with keeping it like over 7 is that the the times where um, the displacement is above 15 uh, is just going to be 15 over 7 minus 10 over 7 which leaves me with 5 over 7 so I could leave my answer like that exactly as 5 over 7 or if you want to change it to um, a decimal you can do but we've got an exact answer here 5. 5 over 7 seconds yeah that's the time it's above 15 meters and this was all vertical so on questions like this don't assume you have to do a horizontal and a vertical it may be one or the other sometimes both so always check the question see what you got before you just dive in and start working out stuff that you don't need to right now we've been given the initial velocity as a vector so you could think of it like this that the initial velocity uh, horizontally is 5 and the initial velocity vertically is 8 because it's 5 i 8 j 5 across 8 up so we don't need to work out sine or cos of something it's there given to us so in, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the 8 over here yeah and just rub that bit out now since we're we're working in vectors I mean we could just talk about the i direction and, and a j direction and, and we could if we wanted to call the acceleration negative 9.8 j because it's it's a it's a vector in in a j direction, so we could do that. I think that comes up later on uh, in the chapter or the book where you're just dealing with with vectors. Uh, it works the same way. So the greatest height in part a, what do we know at the greatest height? At the greatest height, we know that the vertical velocity is zero yeah or you could even say v with a with a j a little j um, is uh, zero so this is to do with vertical so let's um, do our suvat s u v a t so we at the greatest height that's what we want to find now remember we might need to add two on to our answer because look at the point of projection it's two meters above the ground so be careful you don't just write this down we may need to add two on let's have a look at u well 
uh, vertically that's just going to be 8 now I'm taking upwards as positive in this question uh, V that's going to be 0 A negative 9.8 and T we don't care about so S U V and A is going to be V squared equals u squared plus 2as so let's write 0 squared equals 8 squared um, plus 2 times negative 9.8 times by s which is what we're trying to find so s will equal um, negative 8 squared divided by 2 times negative 9.8 and if I do that change my calculator back to normal mode while I'm doing calculations so it's a bit like doing 64 divided by 19.6 if I ignore the negatives and I get 160 over 49 SD button and I get 3.265 blah, 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 blah. now remember we need to add on the 2 because I've just worked out the greatest height taking this as my starting point so we need to add 2 to that plus 2 and to three significant figures that will be 5.27 so 5.27 meters as the greatest height part b now point b and it's asking for the speed of the ball when it reaches b now we need to work out the velocity in the horizontal and the vertical direction and then do pythagoras on that well the horizontal velocity is the same as the initial velocity so the velocity horizontally is going to be 5 we need to work out the vertical uh, sorry the vertical yeah the vertical velocity um, now we see that now I'm going to take upwards as positive so when it reaches B it's dropped two meters below where it was so s is going to be negative 2 u is going to be 8 positive 8 because we're taking upwards as positive um, we're trying to work out V y so V there um, a is going to be negative 9.8 and we don't care about T so S U uh, V and A S U V and A V squared equals U squared write this down uh, V squared equals U squared plus 2 A S substitute in V squared equals 8 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times by negative 2 so v squared before I square root it is going to be 8 squared 64 plus 2 times negative 9.8 times by negative 2 and I get 103.2 which I'm going to have to square root to give me v and it's 10.1587 um, or 008 I actually want to all oh, right okay so I'm gonna write this like this 10.158 now I want the whole thing because if I want to find the speed of the ball I'm gonna have to do Pythagoras on 5 
and this number yeah because this is the vertical horizontal velocity vertical velocity to find the speed you do Pythagoras on those numbers so uh, I now need to do and let's do it up here the square root of 5 squared plus now when I type it in I'm going to press answer button squared so 10.158 like that to show that there's more to that number than I've written down so square root 5 squared plus answer squared square root 5 squared plus answer squared and we get 11.3 yeah 11.3 to three significant figures so the answer to that would be 11.3 uh, meters per second for the speed of the ball as it reaches B and lastly in part C um, if I want to find out the uh, angle that the ball uh, makes as it reaches the ground what we need to realize is that the horizontal velocity is 5 going across now it's going downwards at this point so this is going to be that 11.3 that I got from my previous bit now I would again use the answer button and I am trying to find well I've already worked out sorry let me just correct something here this is going to be the 10.8 you probably spotted that sorry the 10.158 okay so that is that number there and we've got five um, and we want to work out what this angle is here and it was this that we worked out as 11.3 so I'm going to see if I can get the exact answer um, and go back and try and um, get the exact thing I had there it was a square root of 103.2 wasn't it so um, theta is going to be the tan inverse of now if I were to draw a right angle triangle the opposite to that would be this 10.158 thing so that was the square root of 103.2 so I can get the exact answer um, over the adjacent which is 5 let's do that and see what we get making sure we're in degrees tan inverse square root 103.2 over 5 close the brackets and we get 63.79418747 let's round that to three significant figures as we normally do 63.8 degrees so 63.8 degrees and that is 63.8 degrees below the horizontal yeah 68 be below horizontal so like what we call like an angle of depression basically because it's below the horizontal so let me just highlight the answers amongst that working so part a was what we got here Part B was this, and part C was here. Right, now you can do exercise 6C on pages 117 to 120 of the textbook.